Thank you, brother. I appreciate so much uh, the clarity of uh, your delivery of these things. Uh, those of us who walk with the Lord uh, for a time longer than many of you, I remember a time when uh, these things were not clear to us. And uh, we long for them to be. We long to see these things more clearly. And so we're glad to have this fellowship where we can speak these things and, and hear them declared in, in a concise and, and succinct manner <laughs> by even those who are younger and those who uh, have, so to speak, just begun, but yet they speak it so clearly. And we're glad for that. This text is a wonderful text. Uh, it's encouraging. Uh, both of these letters by the Apostle Paul to these believers, remember that he wrote to them after only being with them a short time, a very short time, less than 30 days. He was there less than 30 days preaching and uh, then had to travel on because of persecution and, and opposition and uh, received a message then uh, either in Athens or Corinth of how they were doing and wrote these letters back to them and uh, there, were, there were some difficulties that he had to address. And yet, what he said is just striking. Uh, the wonderful things that he said about their faith and their progress and, and, and uh, the good work of God in them is, uh, is really striking uh, compared to what we, we see after generations and generations of exposure to his writings. And we don't see these things in most churches. In, in most of the people I've been with anyway, you don't see these kinds of things. You could not say what he says here to most congregations. They wouldn't understand about being worthy. Who talks about being worthy? And yet we know because of this good truth of God that this is what he has worked in us, that no unworthy one will be received, accepted, and approved by him. None unworthy. And we know that of ourselves we're not. So something's happened here. Something's happened. And that's why then the apostle several times, our brother mentioned them several times, can speak to uh, his readers about being worthy, worthy of this calling. That God would count you worthy of his calling. See, he's the one, God is the one that's doing the assessing. On the last great day, we'll all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. He will do the assessment. Now there's some assessing for us to do. And that's what we're here to do, isn't it? We're here to make some assessments in line with the standard that's been laid down or the standard that's been established, held up. You think of the plumb line, the plumb line being held up against the wall, you know, the standard there. So we've, we've got, a, it's a high standard, see, high standard. And, uh, and, and, and we'll not measure up ourselves. We'll not. We've, we've already hit the wall on that, haven't we? Long time ago, any of us who've walked with the Lord know that we'll not do that. So the worthiness has to come from another place if, if we would obtain it at all. It's got to come from another place. And this is why we've then yielded ourselves to this good word of God that's in Christ Jesus. This revelation has been sent from on high, this report and declaration and announcement of God's great work in His own Son who walked among us, whose glory we've seen. We have the record of this testimony that God has given concerning him. And so we can avail ourselves of these things. I love this phrase, the work of faith with power. <laughs> the work of faith has its own. You, you all know that I cite those texts there in Romans. Romans 1, Romans 16, again and again. Obedience to the faith. Obedience to the faith. Well, this is the work of faith. In, in, in the... Uh, in a lot of groups, these words are diametrically opposed to one another. If you read this text in some groups, they would say, where'd that come from? Work and faith in the same sentence? No, wait a minute. They would question, where's that in the scripture? It's not talked about. It's just not talked about. Work of faith. Work, how, how, can, how can that, you know, how do you put that together? They don't know. You know, you've got the one group that constantly pounds their own works. And if you talk about faith too much, I, 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 I watch out now, watch out there. We know that there's something for us to do. Sure believe, but there's something for us to do. And then that's all they talk about. 
And then you've got the other group that says, no, you can't do anything. You can't do anything. You're completely, that's completely out of bounds to talk about any works. No, no, no. And yet the Apostle Paul here says, the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. There is a connection there, isn't there? That goes together. <laughs> that goes together. That's one of those big ands again. Yeah, I'll never think of the word and the same again, brother, after that lesson a few weeks ago. But we spent 20 minutes talking about the word and. And fulfill. All good, well, this all goes, count you worthy of his calling and fulfill the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. See? This is what he's doing in us. And so this is what we've yielded ourselves to. And that's simply the exhortation, is to yield yourself to these things. This is what God is doing. He is going to have a people for his own possession. He's going to on that last day. And of course, this may be it. This may be the last day. We may not meet together here again this evening. We may not. We plan to. We will. If God allows. But we may not. We may not. He may come on the clouds in the next hour. We may not have lunch. We may not have lunch. And so we want this working in us. We want to be seen as those who are yielded to these things. To these things. His calling. His pleasure. His power at work in us. See? Now again, our brother made it clear, isn't, didn't he, that there is something for us to do. Certainly there is. As we yield ourselves, we're not simply just standing there and letting this happen. No, he has called us into fellowship with himself. And as we see right at the beginning on the day of Pentecost, man and brother, what shall we do? This message works something in people. It produces something in people. They want to. As they, as they yield their hearts to it, they want to do something. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it. We've got that object lesson there from the life of Saul. The object is, of course, God's glory. His calling and His pleasure and His power at work in us by our faith you know, we know that, that our faith is how we plug into that, and yet He's given us the faith, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and He's doing the work in us. That's right. Amen. Yet we're yielded. Amen. We're yielded. We're willing. Mm -hmm. We're glad. We value and treasure these things. Yeah. We esteem these things above all else. Mm -hmm. And so we have, uh, in light of these things and how God has so arranged uh, the body of His Son here in the earth. How he has called us to himself, where he has put us in the body, we've gathered together in our assembly to hear about these things and let this, then let this work, this word do its work in us. Just to get at, get anything that obstructs, anything that hinders or interferes, get that out of the way and let it do its work. And of course, we have his promise, Sister Nicole just reminded us several times from several different perspectives of God's provision for other things. <laughs> he will provide other things. All these little things, as Sister Barb talked about, all these little things, God will work then for our good. Well, because it's His good pleasure. And He's going to have a people who are worthy. And they're going to be made that way by His power that works in them. And He will reward the faith that He has given. And on the last great day, we will all confess salvation mm -hmm. is of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. It is of the Lord. Yeah. And he will then robe us with his glory. Amen. It'll all be his. We know it is. It's all his. Yeah. And yet, <laughs> it's his good pleasure to give it to us, yeah. isn't it? Amen. Because he wants a people with whom he can fellowship yeah. in these good things. With whom he can have this exchange, just like we want. You know, we want others who we can share life with. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the good things that, all, all of these the things that we value and treasure, we want, we want people we, we can have an exchange of these things with. And so we have our spouses, we have our children, we have our other brethren, you know, even on a human level. But why, why would it be surprising to us that God wants to have this exchange? Yeah. Huh. Yes. 
He wants, he wants to have a fellowship with those who treasure value and esteem the same things he does, who love the same things he does. And of course we have to have, we have to be worthy. We have to have his power at work in us. <laughs> to have that power it has to be his good pleasure. And he has to be willing to make us worthy. You can see that backwards as well, see? It goes forwards and backwards in, in our thinking. So the exhortation is then to yield ourselves to these things. Let him do that work in us and prepare. It will not fail. It will not fail. And so we will not fail other, either. We will not fail to obtain the glory of God in Christ Jesus. We will not fail. It's in another place, Paul calls it the hope of glory. The hope of glory. Thank you, brother. Good things. Well spoken, well delivered. You have some comments, brother? Brother Judy. Brother Matt said that God isn't looking to condemn you. He wants to bless. And a child of God, being a child of God is a blessing in and of itself mm -hmm. because of the many blessings that He bestows on Christ's body. And God has wanted to bless before time and before the foundation of the world. And in earth, he made men, and that enabled God to show us who he is, mm -hmm. a God of blessing. And what is a God of blessing if he doesn't bless? Mm -hmm. So the fact that God blesses us makes him a merciful God of blessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Other comments? Brother Tony. Like the, uh, the emphasis to focus that Brother Matt put on our worthiness. Now, 